real simple, guys. You guys have put in an unbelievable amount of work over the last four months. Go out there tonight, have fun. Right, play fast, play physical, play with a lot of emotion, right, and get that love back for this game. And get that passion back for this game. Ooh, play with ooh, a lot of energy, ooh, ooh, enjoy ooh, playing ooh, with each ooh, other, ooh, right? Let's keep this positive momentum going. You guys have done a lot to improve where this program's at. You guys have done a lot to improve yourself. Go out there tonight and show it. Go out there and show it tonight. Take a deep breath, have fun, play this game the way you love to play it, right? Can't wait to watch you guys. At times it feels like I've been here for a week, and at times it feels like I've been here for 10 years. Um, you know, I think we've done so much to try to get this program's infrastructure built. Uh, I think we put together a great staff. Uh, I think we've gone out there and really started to establish our culture and then what we want our program to look like and, and believe and talk like. Uh, I think our kids have done an amazing job of buying into that. We've gotten very much bigger, faster, stronger uh, with the work we've done in the weight room. Uh, and then we've been recruiting and done a really good job at that. And so. Uh, we have hit the ground running. Uh, it's been a wild eight and a half months at times, but you know, really happy with the progress we've made. Just overall impressions, right? Uh, in a lot of areas, progress, right? In a lot of areas, progress. We, we look bigger, we look physical, okay? And so in a lot of areas, you see progress, right? But the attention to detail is still not where it needs to be. It's still too easy for us to not do it the right way, right? Procedures. We've built everything around that grind acronym that everyone kind of sees out there, and that's something that to our program is, is really important. And so it's, you know, it's the grit that we're looking for. It's the relentless effort that we want to compete with in life. It's living with integrity and, and being really, uh, you know, purposeful in how we go about our business. It's living in the now, that that's the moment that's most important. And then it's just being dependable and it's being the same person every day. And I think those are the pillars that we've kind of tried to build our culture around and kind of showcased our kids how that shows up every day. I feel like Coach Echo was able to get so much buy-in because he was genuine from day one, he still is. I mean, he came in and showed us who he was, uh, showed us his vision for the program and the team, and he hasn't gone back in that sense. Like everything he says, he means 100%. And he's carried out and promised. Uh, I mean, everything he's promised, he's done. Everything he tells us, like, if we work for this, it, this will come of it. And it's been true. So, I mean, it's just the genuine and, like, the trueness and really just the will to win. And that's evident in him. He's so smart. I keep coming back to just how smart he is. Not that it's a surprise, but every meeting that we have, um, you know, he's thought through an issue. Um, he presents solutions, rationale behind his solutions, his ideas. He's a big idea guy. Um, you know, he's excited. He's a first time head coach and um, he, he comes into meetings with just energy and enthusiasm that's so much fun. Um, and Fun is another great word to describe him. I go out to practice, he comes over and, you know, we tell stories and laugh a little bit and, and talk about what's going on, um, but all with just a, a really um, exciting attitude and, and fun, frankly. Hey, let's move! Let's move! And a boy, Nicky! Here we go, on and off! On and off! Nice and relaxed tonight, you hear me? Yes, Have a lot of fun, right? Run this thing, yes, be the leader of the group, right? Yes, Have a blast. All right, let's show these people what we've been doing. Let's go. I'm trying to be nice and relaxed, but you're making me very uncomfortable. I've been in the press box for the last 16 years, so I can't, no telling what I might do down here on the field, though. You're not going to sell this on the black market, right? Here we go. Oh, wait. That a boy. That a boy. That a boy. Yeah, tempo, tempo. Hey! Tempo, tempo. To the house! Hit it. Hit it. Nice job, eh? Good run. 20. That a boy. One. One. Did you ever live with a camera in your face the whole day? That a boy, Terry. That a boy, Terry. Touchdown. That a boy, Terry. Field goal. Field goal. That a boy, Terry. You got to get into a rhythm, first time head coach, to be honest with you. You know, there's times where I'm out there and I'm like trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do at times. But um, no, I, I want to make sure that I'm a face for our program. I want to make sure I have connections to everybody. I think a lot of first time head coaches make the mistake of focusing on their side of the ball when um, that's not the right way to be the CEO of an organization and lead a program. And so I've tried to get out to see everybody and be part of everything and, uh, you know, just show my face wherever I can. Three one out to the left as they work off the right hash. Got to throw again. This time down the right sideline. Got his man again. In strike, Higgins. Touchdown. What a strike. We want to execute and we want to be clean. We want to not beat ourselves. I think those are the things we talk to a lot. Um, I think that comes into the fundamentals of it. And then we want to try to figure out how to be explosive. 
you know, and whether that's in the run game, in the pass game, in the play action game, you know, we want to find ways to create explosive plays and push the ball down the field. Plenty of time looking downfield, lost it for more. He's got it at the 34. Steps inside at the 30, 20, 15, cut straight, and he dives down to the one yard line. Oh, you for sure have to adjust to what you have. I think any good coach will tell you that that, that without good players, right, you're, the plays don't don't work. So. Um, we're for sure going to figure out what that is. And I think that's a part of fall camp is learning right now. Who are we? Who are our best 11? Who, who do we got to get the ball to? Um, and so we're learning that right now as a team. But uh, no, for sure that's in it. And I think every year, any coach throughout his career, you play to your strengths. And so some years I had to throw it more. Some years we could run it more. Uh, I think we're still learning who we're going to be this year. So first and 10 for Temple Mathis from the shotgun. Play fake on a throw. He's in trouble. And he is sacked. Back at the 15. We want to be physical. I mean, we want to set the tone of the game. We want to attack the offense, uh, and we want to be the guy that's applying pressure. And I think if we can do that right from the beginning, we're able to have success. Mike's approach has is, is always been we want to play really, really hard and play really smart. I think uh, – I think we have smart football players, and and the the way that we're going to gain ground the fastest is uh, is the effort in which we play and 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 how we leverage the football and do certain things defensively. You know, for us that comes down to uh, to smart swarm, and the, you know I think the other thing philosophically that we've really tried to ingrain here in training camp, you know we need to be a better tackling football team. You know, at some point in time in the game of football, you either need to down the football or they're going to score. So we've spent a lot of time. You know, with with the limited amount of numbers right now, with uh, with training camp and how the days work, I think we've really maximized our opportunities uh, in terms of tackling. And then the last thing is we got to be find ways to create takeaways. The fastest way to turn around a, a football program is uh, to to win that turnover margin, and, and in order to do that, we got to create takeaways. So I think our guys have, have kind of really bought into that approach, and uh, you know we're excited to, uh, to to keep that trending upwards as we head into the season. All right, you put yourself with the work you've done, the development you've done, what you've done to your bodies, what you've done to get yourselves ready to play, you put yourself in the position to get in the conversation. Now it's, now it's, you got game. Now can you close, can you finish? Right, and, and that's that last level. That's that last level of execution. That's that last level of detail, right, of playing, winning football consistently. Right, and that's what we're searching for this camp, right, is, is can we get over that hump and play consistent winning football? Right. I think we want to make sure that we're, we're going out there and competing the way we're supposed to, that we understand and value the opportunity it is to represent Duke on the football field, uh, that we bring passion and energy to every snap of every game for four quarters. I think that's where it has to start. And I think if we do that uh, and we put some execution and playmaking on top of it, you know, then hopefully the wins will come. But the first thing is just, just making sure that we value being Duke football players and take that for serious. Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. With zero sugar and refreshingly delicious, is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. It first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by like a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to a hundred. Continental. Welcome to the Smart Choice in Tires. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. It's time to amp up the fun at your local Ford dealer during the final days of the Summer Supercharged Sales Event. 
You still have time to lock in your order on select Ford vehicles and we'll lock in your rate. Even if rates go up before your order comes in, you're protected. So stop by your Ford dealer today during the final days of the summer supercharged sales event. Now place your order for a 2023 F-150 and lock in 2.9% APR for 60 months plus $500 bonus cash. Using a Theragun is my favorite thing to do in between practice and lift and also after practice. It's kind of an all-in-one tool and it's super quiet and extremely powerful. It helps me recover exponentially faster. I need to try it first. Yeah. Obviously, I think, you know, taking care of your body and growing your body is something that's extremely important to a football player. And, you know, those are two areas where we feel like felt like there were opportunities to improve when we got here. And you know, we were able to hire Dave Feely to kind of run our strength room. And we've got a five-man staff down there, and, and they've done some amazing things, kind of elevating our weight room and, and what we're trying to do. And then Rosie Grant, we were able to hire to kind of take over nutrition for us. Uh, and I think she's done a great job teaching our kids how to eat right, how to live right, um, and just how to take care of their bodies as you go through the grind of a football season. How we doing? Yeah, just got finished with the workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, boys? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, oh yeah. Before the middle of the day, breakfast. Make sure you get it in now. Don't skip your seat. Two protein shakes. Okay, my name is Ashton and basically what we do on a daily is we get in here extra early, we get prep started for you guys, cutting fruit, getting yogurt together, sandwiches, stuff like that. We have so much fun with y'all. Prepping is always fun, but the best part is service when you guys are actually in here. Y'all keep it fun, keep it lively. We're like a big family here and can't wait to get to know all the new people on the team. We got the vlog going on, y'all. Oh, yeah. Station back here. Get up close to those ingredients real quick. Getting us right. You ain't gonna shake it, though. Oh! <laughs> I'm really trying to see who got the best plate out here. And then you can't forget the album. You know I'm saying, who got the best plate? Right I'm really, I'm really trying to see who got the best plate out here. I don't know about that. Talk to him now. I don't know about that. You can't find nobody in here with a better plate than mine. I see a lot of ketchup over there. <laughs> Look at all these dead ketchup packets. If, oh if my no, god. It's no like it's saucy over if here. If there's no ketchup, it's because of Riley. Like we it. like it saucy. Right there, it's a beautiful place around here, training tables. We come in here, we sit down with our coaches after a long workout. Oh, my boy JP right there. Yes, sir. Go get your food. You need it, bro. You need it. Yeah, they provide us with some food, some hydration, some protein. Make sure you get our right. Yeah, you already know. You already know. Everybody get their minds back right because you need it after a long workout. Drewski got something to say. What do you think about training tables, bro? It helps us, don't it? Hey, and it helps us a lot. You know, we get breakfast every day. Change it from dinner. You know, we really living the dream over here at Duke University. Yes, sir. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. 
We offer free shipping and returns, as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. It's time to amp up the fun at your local Ford dealer during the final days of the summer supercharged sales event. You still have time to lock in your order on select Ford vehicles and we'll lock in your rate. Even if rates go up before your order comes in, you're protected. So stop by your Ford dealer today during the final days of the summer supercharged sales event. Now place your order for a 2023 F-150 and lock in 2.9% APR for 60 months plus $500 bonus cash. Duke Football 360 with Dave Harding. Presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Coach Elko, a very exciting time. Great to have you with us. We're going to have a, a little fun surrounding your first game as a head coach. Talk about some firsts in your life. Uh, first things first, let's look back. 10-year-old self, if he knew you were going into the first game as a head coach, what would he be feeling right now? He'd probably be shocked, to be <laughs> honest with you. No, I, I, this has been a dream of mine for a long time, and uh, trying to keep my own emotions in check will be a little bit hard this week. But uh, just excited, excited for the opportunity, excited to lead this team out on the field Friday night. First time out of the tunnel, what do you anticipate that being like? Uh, surreal. Probably, you know, standing at the bottom of the tunnel in front of your team for the first time is, is a feeling as a head coach that you always want, right? And, and, you know, going out, I got probably 16 family members that are coming out to the game. Uh, my wife and kids obviously will be there. My parents will be there. So uh, it'll be a surreal moment that I'll want to try to soak in as best I can. You going to look for them in the stands? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'll, I'll kind of run on the field, take a quick eye check, do a little bit of eye contact, and then it'll be time to go to work and, and get the game won. What's the first song on your pregame hype playlist? Uh, that's got to be All the Above by Mano. What about Sunday after a game, or in this case Saturday, uh, first thing that you do, win or lose, to kind of reset and look forward to the next week? Yeah, probably just there's a little bit of alone time that just goes into sitting and reflecting and just kind of thinking back through it, and then you just kind of come out of that uh, and then move on to the next the task. What's the most memorable first game you've had as a coach? Ooh. Probably, probably you'd have to go back to the first game I coordinated when I was at the Merchant Marine Academy, and the first time you're on the sideline calling plays, and uh, you know, and then obviously the first game in College Station was something that was pretty special too. When you wake up on a game day, what's the first thing you look forward to? Um, I think getting in front of the guys. I think probably the first thing I want to do is I just like to get in the front of the guys, talk to them all. Hey, how you doing? You good? You good? Um, it's just that kind of mental check to make sure everybody's dialed in and ready to go for game day. It's so the first app you use on your phone on any given day. Probably Twitter. Okay. I think probably I'm a Twitter guy at this point. Although uh, although my kids are trying to get me back into Cap Clash of Clans, so that's popping back ah, up a little that's bit good. too. Good. Yeah. And then well, it's the first person you're texting uh, when something goes great in your life. That's my wife. Okay. That's that's good. my wife first, and I got to say my mom second, or else I get in trouble. But it's definitely <laughs> my wife first. What about your first car? What was that? That was a Pontiac 6000. It oh. was uh, so I was a three sport kid. Uh, I turned 17 or 18. I don't even remember, but I got my license and my mom gave me a $2,500 check and said, "Go get a car. I'm not driving you to a sporting event ever again." And so that got me a Pontiac 6000. That's what I had. And so yeah, I'll never forget that one. As long as it's moving, it right? Was moving. It was <laughs> moving, and it got me there. And it and she wasn't driving anymore, so it was good. What about the first vacation you remember taking uh, growing up? 
always the Jersey Shore. I think uh, we, we had a lot of good moments, a lot of family memories down at the Jersey Shore. We'd go down to the, the quieter part, not necessarily the uh, MTV reality show oh, part, but it. there was a quieter section we used to go to for a couple of weeks every summer. What about pets? It, first pet growing up that yeah, you think so, of? Yeah, so had a, had a uh, hamster um, and then had a dog, Muffin, for a long time. <laughs> what but, was the hamster's name? Uh, Chipper. Chipper and Muffin. Yeah. Right, those are good names. Yep. Um, first team that you remember cheering for growing up? Yankees. Yeah, oh, I think man. it was baseball first, and it was a Yankee fan probably before anything else. You get in your car, um, whether it's coming to work or commuting home, what's the first thing that you're you're doing? You turn the radio on, get yeah, on the phone? Yeah, probably, probably, probably a combination of putting on ESPN radio and getting on the phone. It's probably a combination of those two. Uh, people will tell you I tend to multitask when I drive, which is probably not something I should be doing. <laughs> So everybody look out for Coach Elko on, on the road. Uh, on the road. Finally, um, time to unwind. What's the first thing that you're doing? Uh, probably going to somewhere where there's water, whether it's a beach, whether it's a lake, uh, something where there's there's a little bit of tranquility to the water that I enjoy. And so uh, if we can get out and do that, that's something I enjoy with the family. A season of first. Certainly excited uh, to be part of yours, and we look forward to learning a lot more about you moving forward. Yeah, Thank you, Coach. Ho hopefully. Appreciate it. It's showtime. It's your time. Time, it's go time. You got one shot at a gold mine. It's showtime. He's got it on the ground inside the 40, slips to a tackle, chase from behind, and the ball's out. Slap that from behind by Carter. There's a pile up at the 26 yard line, and the Blue Devils have the football. Dwayne Carter stalked the quarterback and he knocked it loose. And here's the snap. They bring five. He's under pressure. He's in trouble, and he is sacked. Back at the 21 yard line. And it's Shaka Hayward who got him. Dwayne Carter, Shaka Hayward, and Jacob Monk really epitomize what we want a Duke football player to be. And just very proud of them. You know, when a new head coach comes in and you're going into your fourth year, fifth year, you know, it's very easy to just kind of continue to do things your way, uh, not be wanting to change, not be accepting change. Uh, and all three of those kids have truly bought into everything we want to be. And I think they represent, you know, not only this football program, but this university the way we would like. And so I think all three of them are great captains. Uh, when I was first named captain, it, um, I mean, it was very emotional, you know, like uh, some, it's a place I've been coming to since I was a little kid, five years old, coming to games here, you know, with my dad and my family. And, you know, being able to be named captain of this program, you know, it just means the world to me. I thought like it was a great honor being chose uh, by my teammates to be a, a captain, you know, on the team. And it's an honor just to be able to lead them and uh, everything we do uh, on and off the field, being a great leader. I feel like discipline is something that uh, I want to instill like in the, on the team, um, just to have hard work on and off the field and just do that, sustain it like day in and day out. Uh, Coach told me a while ago that the best leader is a listener. And that's a big fan that stuck out to me, is being a good listener, actually getting to know who you're supposed to lead, right? So actually getting to know your individual teammates, who they are, their family, different things like that, and being a real good listener. So that way you know which way to approach them best, uh, how to help them best, and really know what they need. This is special. Congratulations to Carter. Oh, and they got him with the Gatorade bucket. Two of the captains, Carter and Monk at Elko. Send no blitz. Send no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. Using the Theragun is my favorite thing to do in between practice and lift and also after practice. It's kind of an all-in-one tool, and it's super quiet and extremely powerful. It helps me recover exponentially faster.
flips. You send no flips. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. When we embarked on this national search 15 days ago, we set out to find a leader that embodied the values of Duke University. Someone that was committed to excellence in athletics as a part of a larger commitment to excellence in education. Someone who would outline clear expectations for success both on and off the field. And someone who would be a teacher and mentor to the young men that he would be charged with developing during their time as Duke students and preparing them for life after Duke. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Mike Elko. We wanted a coach that would understand Duke, um, the type of student athlete that comes to Duke. Uh, you know, we, we really pride ourselves on um, balancing academics and athletics. We're not sacrificing either to be good at one or the other. We really want our student athletes to excel in the classroom and, and on the field. And so somebody that would understand the type of student athlete that we're looking to bring here and, and that would be successful once they get here. Um, and I really think given his experiences, where he had, had gone to school himself and where he had coached um, and the type of student athletes that he has worked with throughout his career, um, he really, he did understand um, Duke and, and this place. So that's first and foremost what we were looking for, somebody that would come in and, and um, you know, get the energy and enthusiasm going around Duke football because we had certainly seen that um, and just wanted someone to come in here and, and bring us again to the next level. We're, we're ready to, to really grow Duke football and, and be successful in, in the conference and nationally, frankly. I think it matches who I am and I think it matches the kind of program I want to be, you know, and, and you know, I, I went to the University of Pennsylvania, I, I understand how to balance academics and athletics, uh, I've been at places like Wake Forest, like Notre Dame, where we've had to balance those things and still be successful competing against the best football programs in the country, um, and then I think it allows me to build the program I want to build, where we can really truly teach kids about the best of both worlds and make sure that they're prepared for not only football in the NFL, but life as it comes out and beyond college, and I think we've been able to do that. Um, it just fits everything that I want our program to be about. It goes all the way back to high school, to be honest with you. I mean, I remember being the coach of the uh, Powder Puff girls team and, you know, trying to think of what it would be like being a coach one day. And, you know, you go through your, your growing pains in college and trying to figure out where you want to go in life. But it, it always kind of had centered around football and um, obviously got right into this out of college and, and fortunate enough have been able to have some success with what I've been doing.